Okay, so we were able to correctly predict half of the future, but only if you're counting yesterday's episode, because outside of that, we have a pretty damn impeccable track record when it comes to predicting the moves and announcements that will happen within the highly predictable entertainment industry. Politics and policy, not so much. So let's start there. Yesterday, we hoped that when it came up for a vote, Articles 11 and 13 of the, deep breath, Proposal for a Directive of the European Parliament and the Council on Copyright in the Digital Single Market would not pass, and that the people putting these forward would take some time to potentially iron out the details and not make the thing so damn broad. Yeah, to quickly bring you up to speed in case you didn't see yesterday's videos, Article 11 was referred to as a link tax that would force platforms to get permission or pay for posting or aggregating links on their sites. And Article 13 would essentially force platforms to police their sites and take down anything that violates copyright, regardless of whether or not it would be considered fair use or transformative. Now, we, did, we didn't mention this yesterday, but this also accounts for Reddit, who would have to do this for Europe as well, which not gonna it, be easy to it's kind of enforce. you know counter to how the entire internet works yeah uh, of course much of the focus here was on memes becoming illegal which sounds ridiculous yeah how could that be true uh, but it kind of is or could <laughs> be because a, a lot of them feature screenshots or characters from other people's intellectual property well for more info watch our video from yesterday if you haven't by there's a button somewhere no, you can't do annotations. No, it's a card now. Oh, there click, it is. click the card. There, yeah, there it is. But uh, hey, we got an update for you because it seems that our hopes that Europe would come to its senses were crushed this morning when we woke up to the news that both of those articles were approved by the EU's Legal Affairs Committee. Yeah, well, okay, hold on. Just like net neutrality, there's a bunch of steps here apparently. There is still a shred of hope because this was just, yeah, a step, albeit a very big one, towards these articles becoming actual legislation. And according to The Verge, quote, won't become official legislation until passed by the entire European Parliament in a plenary vote. Uh, there's no definite timetable for when such a vote might take place, but it would likely happen sometime between December of this year and the first half of 2019. So, so meanwhile, you can. Yeah, exactly. And now that we've told you what's happening, how can you, you're, you Europeans out there, how can you hope to change things? Yeah, well, Pablo, the, the best resource, the best resource we found was through the Electronic Frontier Foundation, who has been closely following this news and linked to the website saveyourinternet.eu, which has tools available that will easily allow you to contact your MEP or member of European Parliament via email, voice, and tweet so that you can let your concerns be known to them. Will they take it with anything but a grain of salt? We don't know, but Either way, we'll leave a link to that website in the description below so you can at least try, okay? All these like Save the Internet websites are proving to be quite versatile mm -hmm. given that there are new, unique attacks on internet freedom seemingly yeah. every few months. Just change it from .com to .eu. Yeah. Or whatever country is currently trying That's to fine. We've still strangle got, the internet. Still got the domain saved from the whole net neutrality thing. Yeah. Just boot that baby back up. Yeah. But speaking of European countries clamping down on shit in the age of the internet, here in America, we've all heard the term they're trying to take my guns away over and over and over again. Yeah. In Europe, not too much of a problem. Until now, mm -hmm. that's right. Thanks to recently adopted regulations in the Netherlands regarding the legality of loot boxes, the Dutch government has taken away your guns. Yeah. Well, the digital skins of the guns that obviously do carry a lot of value to some people anyway. Some, sometimes more value than real physical guns. Mm -hmm. But still, they took your guns. As of today, Valve has disabled item trading for Dutch customers who use or have used their games and marketplace to buy, trade, and sell items because of pressure from... The Kanspiel Autorität. Cool. Big thanks to Master of Disaster, one of that our... That sounds like you're speaking American English backwards. <laughs> it's... He's one of our Patreon supporters that pronounced that for us. The... The Kanspiel Autorität. ...is the Dutch Gaming Authority, which is how we're going to refer to it going forward. And they'd sent Valve a warning a few months back stating that they would prosecute Valve if they didn't take action to fix the problem by June 20th. So on Tuesday of this week, Valve sent a notification specifically to CSGO users saying, among other things, that, quote, in May, we received two letters from the Dutch Gaming Authority stating that CSGO and Dota 2 contain loot boxes that violate the Dutch Betting and Gaming Act. The Gaming Authority accusation is different from how other countries think about loot boxes, so we hired Dutch legal counsel, looked at the recent study into loot boxes published by them, and learned more about Dutch law. We still don't understand or agree with their legal conclusion, and we've responded to explain more about CSGO and Dota 2. The letter continued, 
In the meantime, we have a threat from the gaming authority to prosecute Valve if we don't implement a remedy by June 20th. The letters don't tell us how to do that, but the study into loot boxes does contain one rather simplistic statement. Loot boxes contravene the law if the in-game goods from loot boxes are transferable. Loot boxes do not contravene the law if the in-game goods from loot boxes are not transferable. So for now, our only practical alternative is to disable trading and Steam marketplace transfers for CSGO and Dota 2 items for Dutch customers. Now, obviously you could understand how Dutch players are probably pissed off right now. They're not even in the World Cup. This is just too many things at once. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this would be annoying, mostly because to them this came without warning at all. So now they're just sitting on potentially thousands of dollars worth of skins that they'll never be able to trade or sell. No, Mom, I need all these guns. They're... <laughs> I'm gonna... not understand. Uh, but, uh, I mean, also, look, yeah, that sucks. But also kind of hard to sympathize considering that these skins have no real effect on the game outside of looking cool and holding perceived value. Goddamn government took my digital guns. When you can pry them from my cold, dead marketplace, which they did. But speaking of CSGO, guys, have you heard about this really cool, cool website? website? Yeah. Anyways, I'm winning all the time. It's really weird. Whoa. And you could win too. But anyways, back to us being right about stuff. Finally. It gets old. Uh, for whatever reason, the latest recurring stupid character to fill the ranks on our show alongside Dr. Malachi Love Robinson, Martin Shkreli, and Title is a little company called MoviePass. Now, on past episodes of News Dump, we'd constantly questioned just how the hell they were going to make money, but also told you that, hell, you should probably sign up while it lasts because it's literally a deal that's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. In an episode a few weeks back, we laughed at his execs from AMC basically told MoviePass to fuck off when they asked for a cut of concessions and joked about how we thought AMC would either introduce their own version of MoviePass or just wait for MoviePass to finish burning all of their money so that they could be bought out for pennies on the dollar. Well, the first one turned out to be true. AMC just decided to yeah, get out ahead of everything, and they've announced their own movie subscription program, which ties in with their AMC Stubbs membership service, and will allow you to see up to three movies a week at any of its theaters for $20 a month. The program is called AMC Stubbs A-List. Mm -hmm. And uh, while the price might throw you off at first, because you're used to MoviePass's absolutely unsustainable price of $10, it actually is more appealing outside of being held down to just one theater chain because you can see films in IMAX, Dolby Cinema, and in 3D. If you want. If you're one of those people. You can book your tickets in advance, which we assume means getting assigned seats as well. Uh, you can see the same movie more than once if you want, and you'll also get all the other perks that come from being an AMC Stubbs member, like earning rewards points to use for discounted concession. They were probably like is a nice little rope that they open up for you too. There is private lanes. AMC Stubbs has private uh, fast lanes for concessions. Does it have a fuzzy uh, No, it barrier? has just like, it has like gold, red uh, carpet? gold barriers around it. Uh, it is quite nice. Gold. So just to compare really quick, MoviePass, it's 10 bucks a month. Yeah, it's cheaper. You can use it at all of their approved theaters, which is a list that will probably be shrinking in the near future. Yeah. Uh, you can't see the same movie twice but you can use it once a day. It's still, we're being honest, a ridiculously good deal. And we're not just saying that, we're just saying that the product is going to eventually fail because there's no way that they're gonna turn a profit and that this AMC deal is one of many knives that will be sticking out of the back of MoviePass as it slowly falls to its death. Not to sound like shills because they're not paying us for this, but our hang up with MoviePass was always the fact that you couldn't buy tickets in advance a majority of the time, uh, you couldn't get assigned seats, and you couldn't see movies in IMAX or Dolby. AMC's thing, it solves those problems. And with three movies a week, that's, that's plenty. Yeah, how many movies do you need to see in one week? That, that you're getting, uh, it's gonna be movie disorder soon. Yeah, if you go see any movie, movie disorder, yeah. It's yeah, more fight. than three movies a week. That's uh, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time, a lot of time at the theater. Mm -hmm. Might be time for a talk. Anyway, regardless, I don't know, maybe just try both, bleed MoviePass dry, give AMC a shot, I don't know. If nothing else, we have to applaud MoviePass for sacrificing itself so that all the big theater chains would ever even think about offering a subscription plan for movies instead of just continuing to charge ridiculous price for tickets. So, thanks MoviePass. I think, yeah. I mean, you guys at the MoviePass company are probably fucked. You just got caught making fake reviews for Gotti. Your, your, your business decisions are incomprehensible. I don't see this lasting much longer than a year, but hey, thank you for your service yeah. to the movie going community, I guess. You really took one for the team. Yeah. Anyways, hey, competition. Movie Pass died for our sins. It's true, it's the new Jesus. Jesus yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyways, uh, watch Idiots Watching Anime. We just did a brand new episode with One Punch Man. And uh, also check out yesterday's video where we fully explained that whole memes being a legal thing. And also inadvertently talk about MoviePass as well. Yeah. One day we'll shut up. Also, our show's illegal now. Oh yeah, we're banned. Fuck. No, hit the, we're not banned. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, do all that stuff. We'll see you next time. Au revoir. Bye-bye.